Hey guys, what's going on? Lucky here. So I'm um, starting a new project today. This guy's kind of been waiting for a while. He's got, a, I think it's a 66. It may be a 65, something to that effect. Um, C10 truck. Thing is really clean. Somebody murdered it out a long time ago, but it's like I got minimal amounts of rust. The roof is clean. It's very dry. Body lines are pretty good. Factory original six cylinder. Has HEI, I don't think that's factory, but uh, I'm just a survivor truck that someone's been taking really good care of. Looks like the motor's been rebuilt. I think the transmission's been rebuilt. You can look at the frame. It's been a frame off. Somebody's cleaned it, painted everything. Everything's new. This actually belongs to somebody who works on the show with me, Mark. And uh, yeah, no bed, but you can just see how clean everything is. He's driving it in the rain, having his fun. But he lives down at the beach, um, is not fond of a manual transmission. I am not one to tell him that a manual is cool. I will just let him do him. So we got a, uh, I want to say a Turbo 350 for it. It's a Steve Sharp transmission. And I'm getting ready to put it in. This party starts by, first of all, my round self squeezing in. Um, this has a, um, I want to say high hump uh, transmission tunnel that's removable. So it was just a matter of cutting through. There was no carpet in here, which was good. I had to just cut through uh, some of his uh, sound deadener there. I don't know what brand it is. And uh, snatch out some half inch bolts, half inch head. Now I'm going to pull the Allens or drift pins on the shifter, which I probably don't even need to. I bet you I can get this thing out without taking the shifter off. And uh, put the car up, take out the transmission. And then we're going to be relocating the trans cross member, taking out one of the cross members. It's actually a trans reinforce or frame reinforcement. And then uh, fitting that new one. So here we go. exhaust dumps right here. I might have to, uh, since I know the guy and I'll run it back up next to the frame and help me hunt the tire so he doesn't have to smell it so much anymore. But I need a flashlight. It is a four speed manual. All that's going to come out. And then this cross member right here is going to get removed from the frame in the front here. This has motor mounts there. Um, some earlier vehicles have motor mounts in the front of the motor, and then this is actually a motor mount. Like that's on tri fives and stuff like that. But uh, we're going to be taking that out, and then this is a brake cross member for the e-brake. Uh, we'll have to do a little research and see where we can move that to. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can just put the transmission in. We can shorten up the front drive shaft because this has a carrier bearing right there. Uh, yeah, we'll see. This is gonna be one of those projects that you're gonna have to take out the e-brake, set it aside engineer that later take out this front cross member support the back of the motor put in the new transmission set the uh engine angle and then i'm going to check that actually put it right back where it's supposed to be and then figure out how to put a trans cross member in it it's possible um it's just a little extra work with all this extra cross members and stuff let's start cutting rivets and uh unbolting stuff first thing we go is going to be the e-brake it'll get it out of the way Take out the trans or the drive shaft and then unbolt the four bolts to hold the trans transmission in. Oh, can we even do that on this? Oh no, it's gonna be bell housing. Unbolted at the bell housing. I was thinking 
two, one bolt there, one bolt down here, but it looks like all that is inside. Yeah, those bolts come from the opposite direction. So two bolts from this side, two bolts from in the bell housing, which means these mount bolts and then the bell housing to get the transmission out. But either way, this has to go. So let's make it go. So a couple of ways to do this is you can take a sharp bit, put it in an air chisel and cut the heads off. Uh, it's still early in the morning for all that racket. So I think I'm gonna see if these are soft enough for me to just polish the head off and then use the air chisel to punch them through. pin back in to not lose any of the parts. These are long extension, but sometimes extension eats up all the power, so I might have to break these through, break these loose with a, you know, I can get everything short extension.
There it is. Solid steel, cast iron, and it's heavy. Alrighty, so there's the clutch. It's a replacement clutch that's gonna come out. Obviously, flywheel's gonna come off. We have to put a flex plate on it. There's the cast iron bell housing. And the four-speed manual transmission. This all looks like it's been cleaned, rebuilt, or I don't necessarily know that it was rebuilt, but definitely cleaned. I don't know anybody that would take them apart, clean them and put them back in. Pretty confident it was rebuilt. Alrighty. Let's find a flex plate and get that automatic over here. Okay, customer dropped off the parts for the truck. Let's see what we got going on here. A uh, trans cross member, that's kind of cool. That'll be helpful. This is a Pontiac transmission. The difference is just the bolts at the top. And um, trans gap makes a kit that just allows you to bolt the Pontiac transmission to it. And it's it can actually bolt up, but not all the bolts line up. So that's cool. A new trans cooler, because life and death of a transmission is basically based on heat. So uh, a good trans cooler that has a fan pulling air over it all the time is best. And it looks like a low car hot rod transmission or a shifter, which is good. There's a chance that it will actually come up through the stock hole in the tunnel. So let's clearance that trans cross member out of there or the old, I don't, know, I don't even know what you would call it. I guess it was a trans cross member attached to the bell housing. We're gonna pull that out. And then, um, uh, check, oh, we gotta find a flex plate for this. Give me the flywheel, find a flex plate. Um, high enough. I can reach everything.
A couple things have changed here. I have to uh, obviously change the flywheel or flex plate and this adapter. And the starter motor. And we kind of lucked out because they make a couple different six cylinders and some of them don't have provisions to bolt the starter motor to the engine block. Because on this one, the starter motor was bolted to the bell housing. But this engine block, I think, is a little bit newer. And it has the uh, provisions for the starter motor right there. Okay, 65 seems to be the magic number. I know if they were ARP, it would be 75.
Okay, I'm all set up to slam this transmission in. The transmission is set up on top of my trans jack. The old transmission has been removed and set over there. It weighed a ton. So does this one. And uh, you can see what I was talking about. Uh, the bell housing is a little bit different on these. Um, for, I mean, these are actually supposed to be down here. It was a regular GM. Pontiac. Le Mans is a different bolt pattern. Yeah, I cut out the cross member, the stock one. And I think there's more than enough room there. But if not, I can still remove those by cutting out more. But I can't set too much out. Got a couple of these flashlights from Harbor Freight. I'm not gonna lie, they do the job. And they're adjustable. And there's a couple different brightnesses. And a little telescopic one there. But they do the job. Back a little bit further.
Okay, transmission is installed. Bolt it up. Got to put some torque converter bolts in it. And then the detent cable has to go up to the front. Um, some short bolts for the torque converter. I need to put a spacer on that too. It's quite a ways. Oh, backlash. But other than that, we're doing good. Okay, we'll get on the starter linkage, or the shifter linkage, and the tent cable first thing in the morning, and uh, trans cooler lines. I'll leave the trans tunnel off, so I'll be able to film everything. Uh, Drop a vacuum line down for the shift modulator, and then bolt the the uh, center bearing, carrier bearing back in, and then figure out what yoke and the length. All right, it's a wrap on the day. Okay, here's the progress. Um, now I can show you more of the shift linkage from the inside. Um, it's typical I get on a bender. It's just start working. Don't worry about videoing. But uh, yeah, shift linkage is low car setup, sort of the hot rod hookup. He had a shifter in the middle of the floor before. It was manual. It's still in the middle of the floor. I got to build a punch a hole in the tunnel, patch a hole and punch a hole. I did hard, hard lines for the trans cooler. I like to run them just around the starter motor, leaving enough room to remove the starter motor. And Keep them right next to the oil pan. That's where they go factory on the early vehicles. Then I uh, dipped it down, punched the hole through the cowl on the front and the cooler is actually mounted right there so that the mechanical fan will always be drawn through it. And I left a little bit of an air gap between the uh, cooler and the transmission, or the cooler and the radiator. Um, yeah, that's about where we're at. Uh, the trans, uh, the drive shaft is over at the drive shaft shop. Did measurements on these because it's a two piece uh, um, drive shaft. I took out the carrier bearing, measured from the center of the carrier bearing to the seal. And then just to be safe, I put the yoke in, the new 350 yoke. I measured it, pulled it out three quarters of an inch. I measured from the center of the yoke to the center of the carrier bearing. So I gave him both those measurements. So between the two, he's able to figure out how long it needs to be. Actually, how much to shorten it because we're just cut about six inches off of it. Light, uh, weld it back together, balance it, and we're good. So let me let it down and then uh, I'll show you the shifter. Okay, just got the drive shaft back. Fits right in like it's supposed to. Um, everything, I think we're done under here. Uh, yeah, I think we are all done. Underneath. Okay, let's put it down, put some fluid in it, get it running, and, uh, make sure all them gears are there. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. I actually just used reference of the mounting holes and measured from there to the center of the shifter on both sides and then crossed it with the mounting holes from the front straight back. Ended up with a hole just in the right spot. So I have an old hole there. I whipped up a little block off plate. I'll mount that right there. A little spot to put a magnetic cup holder tissue dispenser or something to that effect. 
pick up one of those shift boots, put it on there, and we will be set. All the room in the world. Neutral safety switch, as you can see, is wired. Keep it safe. I've seen that happen one too many times. Have to adjust that linkage. The gas pedal is a little out of adjustment. One thing to be aware of is if you converted it from a four speed, which probably idled at eight or 900 RPMs to an automatic, you need to turn that idle down. Otherwise when you put it in gear, it's gonna to wanna to drive itself. But other than that, it's a pretty straightforward install. Just a simple swap. I'm gonna get one of those low car universal uh, e-brake cable brackets to uh, make the stock uh, pull handle under the dashboard there, activate the rear brakes. Those are kind of cool little cables with uh, couplers. And then uh, this thing will be down the road. Um, that's it for this little swap. Is it even running? It's hard to tell. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's about it. Shy of hooking up vacuum line to the shift modulator, checking the trans flu, which I kind of already did, and adjusting the gas pedal. Thanks for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, tell a friend, share, uh, leave some comments, and like the video. See you later.